What's up, everybody? As promised, we're a little bit late with it, but here it is. This is the Evans UV2 full actual review video that we shot at Yamaha Canada. Now, also included in this video is a full interview with my partner Brent. He's a mix engineer, he's a videographer, he's an all around genius guy, master of everything. But uh, I thought it would be cool, since we were sitting there, to get a um, full perspective of these heads from a professional engineer. So I just thought it would be good for you guys to hear his thoughts on these heads in general and, you know, what they're like to mix and all that kind of things. Live applications, I think he touches a little bit on that. So it's a cool conversation for the hardcore nerds out there. I did a lot of improvisational playing that day. Once we set up the kit, just jumped on started um, doing some playing. So there's a solo in this video that you're gonna see. I've decided just for you guys to make the drum mix available as a free download. So if you go to the description box, you'll see a link there, just click on that link. You get a free download of the drum file from the solo. So that's all I got, man. I gotta bounce. Thanks for watching this video. New viewers, new subscribers, welcome to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you know when the next video is coming out. Make sure you drop a comment below. Like. Subscribe. Enjoy the footage. Um, so yeah, so here we are. Um, I'm at the Yamaha office. We're testing out these new UV2 heads from, um, from Evans. And I've been playing on them for the last hour and a bit, a couple hours. And I gotta tell you, man, these things sound really, really, really good. Now, I don't know if you guys remember back a couple years, if you've been rocking with this channel for a few years, you might remember when the UV1 came out, I was flipping out over them because I remember back when I got them, it didn't even, they didn't have a name yet. It still said prototype on the head. And I just remember taking it out, seeing this weird kind of coating on it and thought, hmm, okay, that looks, kind of cool. Took it to a full day recording session and um, it was a rock session and I was smacking on these things for a good four hours with two B sticks. At the end of the day I look at the head and there's not, there's not a stick mark on it. So I flipped out contacted my friend Larry over at the Dario and I'm like what are these heads? When are they coming out? So I've been a big fan of the UV1s for a long time. Been using them ever since. I got them on all my drums. So I've been curious about if there was ever gonna be a follow-up version. And here it is. This is a UV2. Total thickness of um, 14 mil. I thought it was gonna be, like when I heard the rumors of it coming out, I thought it was gonna be a single ply. It's not. It's two plies of seven mil. So you can think of it as sort of a bionic G2, but the control is great on these things. If you really like the sound of the UV1s, but you don't really, if you're the type of drummer like I am where you don't really like to use a lot of muffling, um, going with something a little bit thicker, you know, might be the, uh, the head of choice for you. If you need a little bit more control, which in a lot of situations, you will, you need some type of control, whether it's a gel or whatever else you want to put on there. But it's always nice to use a head where you don't need any of it. So you can use 100% of the head without any obstructions. So yeah, man, these UV2s, I've been smacking on them for the last hour, like I said. Super nice and full. They sound really good under the mics. Um, they tuned up, like in a second. Like I didn't have to do much tweaking at all with these things, but I mean, it's, it's common with the new 360 setup that Evans has on all their heads anyway. But these heads in particular tuned up in no time. And I just slapped them on the kit and started playing. And um, yeah, they sound really great. So just have a listen for yourself.
So um, I'm talking here with my friend Brent. He's uh, my engineer, like whenever we do these types of reviews and stuff outside of my studio. Is my man right here. So when we do these head reviews, like when you see a lot of drum head reviews, you always get the, the um, perspective from the drummer. Um, but it, it for us, it's like, you know, we can only hear what we hear while we're playing the kit. So I just thought it'd be cool to get an engineer's perspective from a mixing standpoint of these new UV2 heads. So we've been messing around for the last couple of hours recording that kit back there. And I just wanted to ask, first of all, your initial impressions, like when you first heard, after we got it all tuned up, threw the mics on it, and I started playing it. While you're back here with the, with the phones on, like what, do you, what were your first impressions? First impression is wow. Um, but before we go into these heads, um, just so, you know, for your uh, audience, just some perspective, um, I've recorded all the heads. Um, I've been in the studio business for 30 years, and, right. <clears throat> uh, so I've recorded all the brands. Um, my personal favorite has, for many, many years, been Evans anyway. Um, depending on, I had five drum kits, and so uh, depending on the kit, I would use different heads. EQ3 always on the kick drum, both mm -hmm. sides. Agreed. Uh, on the toms, uh, it was always sort of either G1, G2. I experimented with different things on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, snare drum, that Genera HD is like, that's on every snare drum I own. So there's no touch in that stuff either. So, yeah. And I'm a big fan of pure sound snares as well. So those are on all my snare drums as well. But mm -hmm. uh, in any case, um, Unlike a lot of sort of purist drummers, in the studio I, I would find uh, I would like dampening. Dampening is a good thing in the studio for me because it sort of gives the, the drum sound a little bit more control. Um, so back to the UV2s. Um, my initial impression of the sound right out of the box is A, and I think you mentioned this earlier, uh, you tuned them up in like Maybe it, yeah, a like, minute. Yeah. <laughs> like it was ridiculous. It took like no time. Yeah, oh. it was like 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 fresh off there in tune. Yeah. Um, but but my next impression was, um, wow, uh, these sound like what I'm used to having G two sound like with dampening. Yeah, that was my next question because I know you're a fan. I yeah. know you're a fan of of using just a little bit of uh, of muffling. I, on the other hand, you guys have heard me say millions of times on my channel. I don't like to, if I can get away with using no muffling at all, that's me. Like I would prefer to have drums, be drums, but you can't always have that. There's a lot of things to consider, like the environment and all that kind of stuff. Um, but whenever I can, you know, I like to go with no muffling. So when I came here today and I knew that we were going to be recording, um, the hope was the sound was going to be good enough to impress this guy. They didn't have to pull out a pack of moon gems. And for perspective, like I'm in the opposite place. I don't care whether we have 92 moon gels on the kit or whatever. I just care about the sound. Yeah. So I come at it from a completely different place. But what I would say about the UV2s is that um, I would say probably <clears throat> 85, 90% of the time I would use them without muffling. The only time I would actually put a gel on is if I was kind of going for that sort of really dead um, kind of 70s sort yeah, of yeah. thing maybe. Yeah. Um, but I don't. I just don't think these need it. One of the other reasons I, I love Evan's heads is the attack characteristic compared to the competition uh, for me is way superior. I used to, when I was using other heads, I would spend all these time with compressors trying to make the attack sharp enough that yeah. it would cut through in a, in a dense mix. Yeah. And all Heaven's Heads, but especially these, um, just have that really nice crack at the beginning when the stick hits Yeah, it. yeah. Uh, they cut through everything without you having to really mess with the electronics at all to get mm. that sound. So uh, as studio heads, these would be phenomenal, I think, for almost any kind of music. Um, and yeah, you can probably leave your dampening at home. Nice.
from a, if you were, if you were to mix these heads in a live situation, mm -hmm. um, would it be the same thing? Like, is there a difference? Like when you're, when you're tracking a tune in the studio, um, what, if any, different approaches do you take to mixing? Depends on the music. Yeah. Um, if the music is uh, kind of open, like there's not a lot of sustained elements in that, um, then you can have the drums sort of a little ringier than than you know otherwise. But the any context where there's a lot of sustained elements or a lot of thick guitar stuff, um, really in a live setting, the only thing that is really going to translate is the attack characteristic. Right. Uh, again, a huge uh, advantage for Evans. But um, so in a in a live context, if it was a heavier thing or <clears throat> if it was a denser type of mix, mm -hmm. I might want to use the gels um, just because I really want to emphasize that attack. Because if they're too ringy, uh, as a front of house engineer, I can't turn them up because they use too much space. But right. if they're shorter, like if the if the decay is shorter and I've got lots of attack. I can turn them up because they don't interfere with anything else, and I can really hear those attacks. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I would say that that you know, bring the gels if you if you're playing in, in in denser music, but if it's a more open thing with more acoustic instruments, again, I think these heads are great without yeah. dampening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because I know, for me personally, it's, it's I don't know if it's just a young drummer thing, but I used to get offended when I would show up at a gig and I thought my kid sounded awesome. And then, you know, the guy at the front of the house would say, you have a couple of, you have some gaff tape or you have some moon jazz, <laughs> something that you can throw on your 16, whereas I think it sounds fantastic. But, and you know, in situations like that, you really, you gotta trust the, the front of the house guy. So when you're mixing drums in a live situation, like for drummers that, that really like to hear the boing and that sort of, that nice curve come out of that that floor tom, and um, and even even the rack toms especially. Um, what what are some of the main issues, if any, does that thing cause like in the context of the mix? And with a with a drum head like this with the UV two, um, do you think that would be a bit of a solution if someone was sort of say, used to using a UV-1, which I am, because I'm a huge fan of UV-1, I always have one. But, um, but if I was going to a type of situation and thought, maybe I'll throw these UV-2s on, and maybe that will kind of help solve the problem, um, do you think that doing something like that would help your situation? 100%. Um, the other thing I would say that uh, I str I've struggled with um, when I'm mixing front of house with, with, again, with some drummers that are maybe less experienced is they think to get the projection of the drum, they have to tune them way high. Yeah. And so they come, you show up and they're like cranked and, yeah, and yeah. They, that's the way that they shorten it by r raising the pitch. And I, I don't think that's the right way to go about it, at least for my taste. Um, when I tune drums, either in the studio or I've, I've actually tuned drums uh, for drummers live as well. Mm. Um, I think it's best to keep them in the lower area, you know, where I think most drummers prefer the sound, a bigger sound. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, and then to make to to make the sustain characteristic right, it's about head choice and about dampening. Um, so I think the UV twos would be. I think the UV twos are, are perfect across the board. If I'm honest with you, and this is not me just uh, saying some kind of promo thing for Evans. Mm -hmm. I actually think I would change the heads on all of my drums that currently have G2s to these. I think yeah. these are a better choice. I yeah. think they're more what I'm after after I've done a bunch of stuff to them. Um, but yeah, uh, <clears throat> back to the to the getting the drum sound right. I, tuning them up is not the solution in, in, in my opinion. Um, keep them low and just make sure the heads are right. Make sure the heads are good because again, I've I've you know, had to mix a lot of kits live that the heads are just done. Yeah. And you're never going to get a good sound out of, um, out of a bad head. Right. You know, um, so, so yeah, I think any drum kit almost better drums sound, uh, you know, better than, than lesser drums. But 
any drum kit with a great head that's tuned properly mm -hmm. and you've got the sustained characteristic under control is gonna sound amazing on a stage or in the studio. It's the same. Cool. Um, yeah, there's, you know, continuing on to what we we're just talking about, um, as far as mixing them in situations where you got a lot of guitars on the stage. The misconception, like you were saying, is that you got to be able to cut through the guitars. So all your toms, you know, you pitch them up and when you do that, like you really, you risk losing a lot of stuff coming out of that tom that you really love to hear, just for the sake of being able to compensate for everybody else on the stage. So ideally, you know, I, I always like to try to choose a drum head for the situation where you wanna, there's enough different varieties of drum heads out there where you can choose the one that you need for the job, ideally without having to do anything with it, right? So like you were saying before, like if you're, you're a big fan of the G2s, but even with the G2s, you'd have to, you'd yeah. have to throw stuff on it. Um, back to the heads for a sec. Uh, one of my favorite heads is the Evans EC2. I love the EC2s. Right, yeah, with, um, the, with the built in. Yeah, it's like got the dampening ring. It's a clear head, yeah. but it's got the, the dampening ring. And one of the reasons I like those is because I get the sound of a clear head, but um, sort of the dampening ring kind of makes that sustained characteristic mm -hmm. work better for me. Mm -hmm. um, what I would say about the UV2s is they, are, they actually, to me, sound like the coded version of the EC2, if that makes, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, on maple drums, for me in particular, I like the EC2s. Um, but I would totally try these, because I think they would maybe be great on a maple kit. Yeah. And certainly, uh, for this oak kit, um, you know, and probably other kits, I, I think these are amazing, so. Cool. Yeah. Be able to find that balance between projection and uh, and sustain and control is tough to do because, like you were saying, with the G, with the G2s, um, you get this gorgeous sound out of them, but sometimes you still kind of need to gotta shorten it. it. You got to yeah. shorten it a little yeah. more. Yeah. So these versus the G2s, this is sort of like a more contained kind of bionic version of the G2. And that is the exact reason why I think you should check these heads out.